Welcome to Fighters and Beyond, your trusted channel for clear, concise and clinical relevant medical content. Whether you're a nursing student, a future physician or just someone curious about healthcare topics, we've got you covered. Today we're diving into pneumothorax, a condition where air goes where it definitely shouldn't, the pleural space. Let's get started. A pneumothorax is a medical condition where air accumulates in the pleural space, the area between the lung and the chest wall. This air buildup can cause the lung to collapse, partially or completely, depending on the volume of air and how quickly it accumulates. There are several types of pneumothoraxes, each with its own underlying causes. A spontaneous pneumothorax occurs without underlying lung disease, often in tall, thin, young males. Or it occurs in people with pre-existing lung conditions like COPD, cystic fibrosis or tuberculosis. You can also get traumatic pneumothorax. That's a result from blunt or penetrating chest trauma, like a car accident or stab wounds. An iatrogenic pneumothorax could be caused by medical procedures as a complication. Think about a central light placement, mechanical ventilation or thoracentesis. There's also a possibility to get attention pneumothorax. That's a life-threatening variant, where air enters the pleural space but cannot escape, which will lead to increased intrathoracic pressure and impaired cardiac output. Risk factors include smoking, lung disease, high altitudes, mechanical ventilation and certain genetic conditions like Marfan syndrome. Symptoms can vary based on the size and type of pneumothorax, but commonly include sudden sharp chest pain, shortness of breath, tachypnea, decreased or absent breath sounds on the affected side, hypoxia and intention pneumothorax, hypotension, distended neck veins and tracheal deviation. Like I said, that's a real medical emergency. Diagnosis is primarily clinical, supported by imaging. In a physical exam, you will find diminished breath sounds, hyperresonance on percussion and asymmetrical chest movement. A chest x-ray will reveal a visible pleural line with the absence of lung markings beyond it. An ultrasound is quick and increasingly used in emergency situations. A CT scan is also used. It's mostly the gold standard for small or complex pneumothoraxes, especially in trauma cases. Management depends on the size, type and severity. Small and stable pneumothoraxes may resolve spontaneously. Oxygen therapy can accelerate air resorption. A needle aspiration could be useful in stable, moderate-sized primary spontaneous pneumothoraxes. Thoracostomy for larger or symptomatic cases. It allows a continuous air evacuation. Surgery is an option for recurrent pneumothoraxes or persistent air leaks. May involve pleurodesis or bellectomy. Emergency needle decompression followed by chest tube or tension pneumothoraxes. Time is critical here. If not properly managed, pneumothoraxes can lead to re-expansion pulmonary edema, persistent air leaks, infection, which will occur especially with chest tubes, respiratory failure, a hemopneumothorax or recurrent pneumothoraxes. Nurses and physicians should stay alert for sudden change in respiratory status. Always reassess after procedure. Monitor and chest tube function, check for bubbling, drainage and patency. Pain management, chest tubes can be very uncomfortable. Patient education, including smoking cessation and when to seek emergency care. Documentation, including breath sounds, oxygen saturation, chest tube output and any signs of distress. That wraps up our overview of pneumothorax. It's a condition that can escalate quickly, but with prompt recognition and the right intervention, outcomes are often excellent. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to Fighters and Beyond, and hit the bell so you never miss an update. Drop your question in the comments and let us know what topic you'd like to see next.